So I'd like to go over this book right here. It's called Extreme Programming Explained. Embrace Change. It's written by Kent Beck in 20 years ago in late 1990s. So this is like basically the software engineering book. If you read other books you're probably just a programmer in my opinion but this book which I've never yet read completely is pretty much condenses everything down into a very clear nutshell of I mean everything from agile this predates agile software development it predates DevOps but all of that is still included in this book so anyway you can see it's categorized software engineering properly and uh, this these first two lines right here address the biggest fears of software developers and of business people and that's what XP targets is to uh, to change that that that's unnecessary that's just a traditional rut so right there it says software development projects can be fun productive and even daring on the development side and they can also consistently deliver value to a business and remain under control so those are of course excellent things to be able to deliver extreme programming uh, developed to address the specific needs of software development conducted by small teams in the face of vague and changing requirements you may recognize that type of terminology that is straight agile software development um, scrum so many of those types of frameworks and methodologies are all about small teams vague requirements and change so this addresses all of that and we can skip down here and see that um, the fundamentals of XP this is the cheat sheet right here that you can just unpack so much out of Distinguishing between the decisions made by business interests and those to be made by project stakeholders. That's something I still have to read into to see exactly what what is meant by that. Um, writing unit tests right here, test driven development before programming, keeping all tests running at all times. Um, that was a big deal when this came out was this really pushed the idea of unit testing integrated test uh, this will be continuous integration right here in DevOps integrated and testing the whole system several times a day which was uh, at least to me unheard of at this time obviously at least a very few companies were doing or attempting to do this but of course this would be 10 15 20 years later before the majority of businesses or, or software development companies or projects have started doing that some people are still trying to do that producing all software in pairs and notice all software in pairs that uh, two programmers at one screen there's obviously lots of benefits to this um, again something else that just totally unpacks but of course not all budgets support off all software in pairs so that can always be done but ideally that's the way to go it's just there's it's so much better with real time um, the synergistic output of the two programmers usually is more than the sum of its parts or ideally is more than the sum of its parts starting projects with a simple design that constantly evolves to add needed flexibility and remove unneeded complexity definitely sounds like scrum um, lean product development and then this one, this next line further qualifies that putting a, mon a minimum viable, or excuse me, uh, putting a minimal system into production quickly and growing it into whatever direction, whatever directions prove most valuable, which is obviously very minimum viable product style, all that, predating the popularity of any of those schools. Um, why is that? Or at least the mainstream Western adoption. Um, across the board of any of those schools for sure and why is it so controversial because of these are game changer things especially back then um, don't force members to specialize and become analysis so this is um, basically supporting somewhat of that t-shaped thing that's so common today so they're promoting that that you know everybody who's a quote-unquote 
programmer developer person is gonna you know they're gonna do analyzing they're gonna do architecting programming testing integrating um, to say the least you know so uh, what is this don't complete don't conduct complete upfront analysis and design another agile principle um, starts with quick analysis continue to make analysis and design decisions throughout development development infrastructure and frameworks so excuse me develop infrastructure and frameworks as you develop your application not up front delivering business value is the heartbeat that drives XP that's definitely something I'm a big proponent of um, you know don't necessarily pull in that same old framework a lot of people will do that pull in the same old framework pull in the same old libraries everything and just throw them at stuff until something sticks and that's just the completely backwards approach in my opinion the first thing you should do is start with a clean slate um, go vanilla don't even go vanilla particular language go vanilla like pencil and paper just uh, you know at least look at the landscape give the landscape an update maybe there's a new improved IDE that takes off where the last one left off or something there there's always even if you don't adopt that new IDE for a brand new project which I would recommend against it's horrible to try and bring on massive new tools if you haven't experimented with them yet of course but um, yeah, at least knowing that that's on the horizon that you know the say JetBrains was just coming out and it was in final beta or something and you'd never heard of that and you were still on Eclipse you know it'd be good to know and then throughout your spare time over the next month or whatever you could be checking on that right and then once you know a stable version of that new tool drops you'll be ready to start potentially adopting it so anyway that's the that's the thing I say is just don't box yourself in you always can go jump in that box and XP is definitely something that's that brings that I think agile and lean support that too uh, don't write maintain implementation documentation communicate XP projects occur face to face or through efficient tests and carefully written code that is probably one of the most unpackable statements in here I mean they're all huge but this one is uh, easily confused I think amongst a lot of people for one thing you got to go back to the time period this was more in context of where just so much red tape to cut through that saying hey if we can just back and forth this information face to face quick huddle on it or something and just hash it out without taking weeks or whatever to just go through a ridiculous grind but that being said that doesn't mean that text messaging isn't efficient for some things or that um, or that there shouldn't be any communication in the code which this does say that or through efficient tests and carefully written code which basically any of that face-to-face -face communication that does need to stick should be echoed within the code within the test primarily and you know if absolutely need be maybe in the readme or some further documentation but that should that should come later everything should be as self-evident as possible in the code anyway I'm preaching I didn't even intend to do that at all right now but this book is just so cool and this back page just is a real good jump list so anyway it's written by Kent, Kent Beck um, seems like a pretty cool dude he's like I mean if you trace everything goes towards this X right here like everything from last century is kind of like building up to become this and everything from this century seems to be like a spin-off of this this was like that central moment of pow and then like agile came to be and just all this stuff but anyway it's pretty cool down here um, the forewords written by Eric Gamma who I consider to be Mr. Design Patterns uh, amongst some others he's the guy that wrote the book Design Patterns one of the people who wrote the book Design Patterns which is indispensable in my opinion and a good companion with this book as well as the C programming manual um, but yeah Kent Beck uh, important things that he sort of is credited for pioneering um, which of course are engineering patterns like this um, I'm not sure what hand he might have had in design patterns it vaguely sounds like he might have inspired Eric Gamma to 
actually go through with refining and documenting the design patterns possibly like he did with Martin Feller for refactoring but anyway um, the CRC cards were a big deal that was sort of like coming to terms with being able to visualize class diagrams and whatnot like that and also having some text in there and the text is constrained on a little three and a half inch note card or three by five note card and that's definitely something to look into and people who aren't fully object oriented schooled object oriented design schools seem to pick up on CRC cards really well um, the X unit framework so like J unit X unit any kind of unit testing framework you ever did started with Kent Beck he wrote the first one it was uh, S unit for small talk one of the earliest and arguably best object oriented implementations and then that became J unit next which he wrote of course famously on a flight with Eric Gamma and then it was just a domino effect from there and everybody started creating similar frameworks but that is the original so this is this book from 1999 printed on acid free recycled paper I got it for just a few bucks online I couldn't find a screenshot of this back cover so anyway I wanted to share it and there's some other cool stuff in here like open office designs where you take down the partitions and kind of lump everybody together that was something that um, Kent Beck seemed to pioneer the popularity of in software engineering and there's also this conclusion back towards the back and it just addresses some of the I'm reading a few lines out of the paper right here um, in the conclusion all the methodologies are based on fear it says so here's what Kent Beck's afraid of doing work that doesn't matter having projects canceled because he didn't make enough technical progress making business decisions badly having business people make technical decisions badly for me coming to the end of a career of building systems and realizing that I should have spent more time with my kids doing work I'm not proud of um, I think we can all relate to those for sure and uh, XP also reflects on things that he's not afraid of he says which is coding changing his mind proceeding without knowing everything about the future relying on other people changing the analysis and design of a running system and writing tests so anyway there's also the second edition of this book which he rewrote pretty much entirely with his wife I like the wording in the first edition I don't think it's as racy and crazy as everybody acts like it is like it's some crazy programmer by himself or something oh yeah and two more things that I forgot to mention is technical debt this was a early in my opinion uh, coverage of technical debt this part I skipped over this new lightweight methodology challenges many conventional tenants including the long-held assumption that the cost of changing a piece of software necessarily rises dramatically over the course of time and that is technical debt right there um, XP recognize it, recognizes that projects have to work to achieve this reduction in cost and exploit savings once they have been earned so that's where the extreme part steps in that's one of the big deals with the X and the XP is that like the pair programming all the time and uh, all of this kind of stuff the uh, the technical debt like taking advantage of that of those time and resource savings and which is cool I mean that's what you ultimately do with it and the other thing that's really interesting is this uh, the rediscovery of test first programming which is test driven development and Kim Peck is mr. test driven development because of XP programming practices and the unit framework like I'd mentioned um, the funny thing is this the rediscovery of test first programming so yeah test first programming existed and supposedly yeah in the 70s there was some that yeah, very similar to test first programming I guess you could say things going on of course but um it wasn't like this widespread practice that got reintroduced to people or anything or there wasn't like he it's almost like he's giving credit to somebody else and what it boils down to is this he had a kids programming book or you know beginner friendly programming book that taught you 
this test first method. This wasn't like necessarily some in industry proven way of doing things that whatever. This is so funny because it, it was just this little book that said, hey, you know, write a little test that, you know, says what your program, your little function or your line or your statement is supposed to do and then make that happen. And that stuck and made an imprint with Kimpec. And he's turned it into a, a software engineering practice that's software engineering practice that is indispensable in my opinion um, I'm sure a lot of engineers and architects in the industry would back that up too because it's basically how you x-ray your welds as an engineer is with that um, test first you you create that problem you create that I don't know how to explain it right now but that's what I would compare it to anyway with that, I'm out.